So I'm here in Michael's. I was looking to pick up some alcohol inks and I found them hidden away here in the scrapbook aisle. I'm not really sure what I want to get, but they look like they have a bunch of these Tim Holtz brand alcohol inks. So I might pick up some of those. I'm definitely going to get some of his Yuppo paper because you have to use a glossy paper and I've heard this is the best one for that. They also have some extra things I probably won't get and even some pinata inks, which I would pick up, but I also want to get a gold mixative and I can't find that anywhere individually, but I did see that in one of these uh, little kits they had one so I might have to get that basically just because it has that gold mixative in it and it does come with three colors so since I got that I don't want to pick up that entire pinata set I might just get some of the little individual three colors okay so here we have a little haul <laughs> I've never done a haul before, but there's something so satisfying about brand new art supplies. Half of me wants to keep them pristine forever, and the other half cannot wait to get them all dirty. Okay, first we'll take a look at this kit that I picked up. It looks like it comes with some other things like stamps and stuff. I probably won't use those today, but I'll show you everything. I really just got it for these three alcohol inks. The gold mixative and even the blending solution but i'll show you everything it has i also got some little jars to put the ink in and some little plastic pipettes i think they're called it's so fun it looks like a little science experiment i'm really excited to try this all out since this kit came with just the primary colors basically regular I also decided to pick up some pearls in like prettier colors, so let's hope those work out. Just for fun, I want to just open this before I read about what's in it just to see what I think. <laughs> and I don't know, I have more fun doing it that way. So it looks like we have, I have no idea what that is, a stamp. And kind of looks like a stamp thing but it has cotton on the end so maybe that's like for dabbing dabbing <laughs> oh my god okay so here we have what i bought this for the red yellow and blue inks there's some alcohol blending solution which i think is just alcohol and the gold mixative don't take my word on that being just alcohol, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing it does the same thing. I'm actually going to buy my own alcohol to use. So we've got some paper here, a little piece of acrylic, I might have to do a little reading on this one. Okay, an acrylic block, doesn't explain why, but maybe if we just keep looking we'll figure it out ourselves. <laughs> Okay, the last thing is these stamps. Okay, so they're all like together, so you must have to put them onto the acrylic to use separately as a stamp. I'm not gonna use the stamps today, and I'm not gonna do these pattern ideas. I actually wanna use like this drip technique where you use a blow dryer. So when using alcohol inks, you're gonna wanna have the actual ink and then you're gonna need an alcohol to dilute it and to add on top. I'm using the blending solution here since that came in the kit, but later on I actually am gonna use this rubbing alcohol I got from the drugstore. It's 91% isopropyl alcohol, and basically anything over 90% will work well. You can see that I added some of the alcohol directly to the paper, and you can do that or you can even add the ink directly to the paper but the reason that I mixed some of the alcohol into the ink is so that it doesn't dry as quickly because I'm trying to move it around a little bit on the paper and when you put the ink onto the paper it dries pretty quickly. I skipped ahead a little bit because I'm just playing around with these inks and trying to learn like how they work so I skipped to the part where I'm using a different color which is this pearl pink and you can see that when I try to blow it, it dries almost immediately and doesn't move around. That's because I didn't add any alcohol to it, but that's okay. That's how I wanted it to look. 
So I'm just kind of learning how they work and practicing. I actually decided while doing this that I didn't like using the straw because I really couldn't control where it moved around to. So for the next pieces, I actually decide to use a blow dryer and I like that a lot better. So and now that I've played around a little bit, gotten a feel for the inks and decided what techniques I want to use, I think I'm ready to do my very first alcohol ink painting. I decided to use a blow dryer instead of a straw because it kept the ink together better whereas with the straw you have like direct airflow so you could get a drop of ink that would just blow off in a straight line whereas with the blow dryer I could switch back and forth and keep it all together. Also it completely dried it out every time so unless I re-wet an area it wouldn't move when I'm working on a different section. Originally, I thought that these were going to perform like watercolors or even like an acrylic pour because I've done a Dutch pour with a blow dryer, but the alcohol ink performs so differently. You can see in that first two areas that I did, it looks like it's done with many different drops of ink because of the way that it dyes the paper and as you blow it, it layers back on top of itself. So quickly you don't have to let it dry for it to do that and it's just a really different effect than anything I've ever seen before and the way right what I'm doing right now with just the alcohol the way it re-wets the ink that's already dry and mixes with that makes a really cool effect of like fading outward and it's really interesting it's kind of hard to get the hang of which is why I'm keeping this piece extremely simple but I've got so many ideas on what I want to do once I get the hang of it. Here you're going to see me add just straight ink and watch how quickly it dries and now I added some ink mixed with a little bit of alcohol and that is taking much longer to dry and it blows around much easier it's much more liquidy I guess you could say. Here I'm adding a little bit of both and you can see how much darker the ink straight out of the bottle is the alcohol lightens it so you can add more alcohol to make it take longer to dry and be lighter or you can do it straight from the bottle to get the deepest effect of color here you can really see those dark areas that I use the ink straight out of the bottle are really reflecting the light and that's because the ink almost dyes itself into the paper it's that really glossy paper and it almost looks like a photograph. It's really cool. It doesn't look like a regular paint would. So here I start to use some of that pearl alcohol ink that I got. And I wanted to add a really, really light purple in some areas. I was just adding it straight out of the bottle and drying it so that it would be controlled when I added the alcohol. But what I didn't know is that the pearl ink doesn't perform the same way. And you can see here, it's not budging at all. I thought it would perform the same way the blue was, and that if I added a bunch of alcohol on top of it, that I could spread it out to be really, really light purple. I didn't want that vibrant purple in the picture, but it wasn't moving even when I tried adding the alcohol before I dried it. So I decided instead to just go back and add blue on top of it, because I didn't want that bright purple in the picture. I will say that I did not realize that the pearl inks needed to be shaken up extremely well before they were used, so I don't know if that affected this or not. It seemed like after I shook it up, all it did was add that pearl glitter to it, where at this point you can see it doesn't have much of that effect it almost looks like a regular purple so I don't know if that would have changed the way they performed. I'm definitely gonna have to keep practicing and playing around with these because I have a lot to learn still. Here I just went back to that very first area and added a lot of alcohol to it and even after all that time under the blow dryer it was able to re-wet that area and make that ink be workable again, which is one of the really cool and unique parts of working with the alcohol inks. 
Alcohol inks are so unique and different than anything I've ever used before, so I have a lot to learn and I think that that's why I wanted to keep this piece in particular pretty simple, but I did want to try out just a little bit that gold mixative. So I added just a little bit here and it ended up kind of just blending in. I think that I need to do a little bit of work and research on how to use that mixative. But once I had a little bit of a flop in that area, I decided not to add any more to this picture in particular. I think I need a little more practice on some scrap paper before I use the gold mixative. The reason I wanted to try alcohol ink so bad is because I saw some really impressive artwork on Pinterest and even some on Instagram. I don't know if this is newly popular or if it just all of a sudden was recommended to me because I had never seen art like this before and all of a sudden I'm seeing it everywhere. Even since I made this painting, I've been seeing some other YouTubers that I follow doing like Inktober videos. So it must be a really popular thing, but somehow I was never introduced to it before. I can't wait to go watch all those videos now that I've finished my first picture. I always like to go at it and just wing it the first time without watching a ton of tutorials and really learning just so I'm not influenced by like another artist's technique so I can kind of just find my own way and see what I like but then I do like to go back and learn a little bit so I can get some experienced artist tips and tricks. After I watch some more tutorials, do a little research, practice on some scrap paper, do a couple more practice paintings like this one, I'm going to do a much more intricate and hopefully a more experienced, better second painting. I was going to include that in this video and just have the whole thing all be in one video, but it would be extremely long, so I'm just going to make it a second video. So make sure that you're subscribed with your notifications on so that you don't miss it when I post that because that painting is going to be even more impressive than this one. Now that I know that I like the regular inks better than the pearl inks, I'll probably go pick up some more colors. I don't know if I'll pick up the Tim Holtz brand again or if I'll pick up that large pinata set. It really just depends on the color options because I really do like these quality of these Tim Holtz products that I got, but I do like that large pinata set. It had a lot of options. So it'll really just be depending on what colors they have because I'm hoping on doing a fall themed one, maybe some leaves. So I would need some autumn colors. Let me know if you have any experience using alcohol inks and what brand you like to use. I literally never know when to stop my paintings. I could rework them and work on the details forever. So it's actually kind of cool the way that you can rework the old areas with the alcohol ink, like reactivate them with alcohol. So I'm having a lot of fun with that, just touching up little areas. And you can almost redo something if you don't like it. You can really work with it a lot. But I am happy with how it is here. So let me just show you what it looks like without that reflection on it. It looks very nice in person. As always, here's a look at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss the next one.